So a few months ago, one of my friends asked me how to get my terminal looking so nice. And the fact is what they were admiring was the shell I was using. I use a shell called ZSH. ZSH really allows us to customize our shell to our knees and has many different features that I think in a modern shell we really need. It allows us to replace our existing shell, which could be Bash in our case. It has a rich ecosystem of themes and plugins that really make things a lot better. And it also gives us abilities to have these stored in dot files. Now all that said, let's install ZSH and get it all configured. So the first thing we want to do is actually install our ZSH shell. So you can do this using pretty much any package manager. Here I've actually only just put three examples using a Debian based system, an Arch based system or Mac OS as well using Brew. So on this Debian based distro, all we need to run is a sudo apt install zsh. Now, of course, you want to make sure that your package manager is up to date, but once you've installed it, you'll have it available. So the next thing we want to do is actually install a tool called oh my ZSH. This actually will help us manage and maintain all of the configuration files that we have. And it's actually a great utility that you can find on GitHub. So to get oh my ZSH installed onto your machine, all you need to do is download the install.sh file from their GitHub repository. In this case, I'm just using a curl command and then I'm using an sh-c command to then run it as a bash script. And what this is doing is downloading this install script and running it. It's then doing a couple of things behind the scenes. The main thing that you'll see at the top here is it's cloning the oh my ZSH repository and it's actually cloning it into our home directory. And then what you'll find is we're actually also being, we're actually just straight on executing ZSH. And you can see this by if you echo dollar shell, this will actually show you exactly what is the shell that you're currently in. And in our case, it's a ZSH. All you'll also find is actually there's another file installed in your home directory called zshrc. We can actually see this by running the ls-la command, which will show us all the different files on our home directory. And at the bottom here, we can see zshrc. There are two parts of oh my zsh that actually are really important to talk about. The first is themes, the second is plugins. Both of these are actually configured in our zshrc file. So if we do a quick NeoVim or Nano or whatever you want to use and you look at inside this ZSHRC file, you'll see a bunch of different settings and actually this looks very much like a bash script. In the first few lines of this file, we can actually see where oh my ZSH installation is being set and used. I will just leave this as it is. And then we can see just slightly further down from here, we can actually see the theme that is being used, which is Robbie Russell. As long as you set your theme to the ZSH theme variable, it'll be used. If you head over to the wiki in the GitHub repository, you'll actually find a list of all the pre-built themes that are available to you with a screenshot of what they will look like. So if we now head back to the configuration file, we can actually set this theme variable to any of those themes that we saw in the wiki. So maybe by default, we want to change it from Robbie to something else. So let's take an example of another theme called Dino. So if we save this file now and exit, we can actually see that the theme is still the same. But if we quit and relaunch ZSH, we can actually see that the theme has been updated to the one that we chose. The last thing to talk about themes is the ability to customize it to your own heart's content. So let's take an example where we want to create a new theme called subscribe. So if we save this now and we maybe copy a, an existing theme over to a new theme called subscribe, and we copy that over and then we just quit ZSH and reload it, you'll actually see that the new theme now exists. The next part of oh my ZSH that I think is really powerful is the plugins. A list of all the pre-built plugins can be found on the wiki and I highly encourage searching through them to find the ones that you need for your workload. So if we go back into the configuration file again, we can actually see halfway down that there's actually a plugins variable as well that contains a list of plugins. By default, it only contains one plugin, which is called Git. So to add a plugin, it's as simple as adding to this plugins variable. So an example here is maybe I want to add the languages for Rust, by the way, and maybe we want to also add the languages for Python, or maybe for Node.js, or maybe any number of these other plugins that are available by default. And what happens is that we can now save this and we get all of the features of those plugins. I highly recommend skim reading through all of the names of the plugins to see which ones match your workload. 
I think it's really important to make sure that if you're using things like Docker and Tmux and Kubernetes that you have these plugins. If you're using things like an operating system like Debian or Fedora or Arch Linux or Mac OS, make sure that you have those plugins as well because they make your life a little bit easier. Or if you're a programmer, make sure to install the appropriate languages that your workload needs as well, because it really makes your life easier when you can auto complete commands for yourself. Like themes, you can create your own plugins and customize them to your own needs and install them on your local system as well. So here's some tips and tricks about using ZSH. The first one's obvious, but I think it's worth pointing out is you do want to set ZSH as your default shell. This will allow you to automatically, when you create a new session on your in your terminal, will automatically use ZSH instead of using bash and then having to load ZSH from there. So the second tip I highly recommend is to use dot files. If you've seen my previous video, I explained how I manage and maintain all of my dot files inside a Git repository, and I highly recommend using this. My third tip is to use aliases and functions to make your life easier. Here's a list of some of my favorites here, but one thing you can do is store these inside a plugin that you can automatically load inside your ZSH. You can store them directly inside your ZSHRC file so they're automatically loaded. You can store them inside another bash file and source them using the source command. So the next trick I highly recommend is to actually take a look at the ZSH users organization on GitHub. You can actually take a look at some of these amazing plugins that have been built. One of them is auto suggestions. This allows us to actually suggest what will be finishing our command. So if you have already typed in LS, maybe it'll automatically suggest that you type in dash LA, or it could be a suggestion where you're writing a command that's quite complex and you write it every time. It'll auto suggest an autocomplete for you. And then the second one is about syntax highlighting as well. So if you want to add syntax highlighting in things like your uh, in particular strings or for certain commands, it'll automatically add those as well. So as my last tip I'll leave you with, I highly recommend installing and using a tool called NeoFetch. This really will make your ZSH pop. You can also use it in Bash, but it gives you that little bit more so when you open a new session in your terminal, you get a lot of details about your configuration of your machine that you're currently running on and just overall a pretty way of doing it. And that's it. That's how you install and set up ZSH, customize your themes to your own color schemes, and even install the plugins that you need to make yourself more and more optimized as well. So I all hope you have a lovely day and take care.